In this video, we're going to have a look over the financials of ASM International. Quite often, this company gets overlooked by its bigger brother ASML because they are very similar in name and very similar in the amount of products that they produce. Because ASM International is also building machines to make the chips of the future. And they have massive partnerships with companies like IBM. And because this company usually goes under the radar a little bit, I wanted to have a look at their financials right now. Let's see whether or not we think if we buy the stock today and hold it for a decade, can we expect to outperform the market. So looking over at their revenue numbers here for the past 10 years, we can see a very steady growth, just like we can expect from any company that's in the semiconductor business. They've been growing their top line revenue by 12% every single year for the past 10 years. And on top of growing their revenue by double digits, they've also grown their EBITDA margins when compared to their revenue. Because the moment that we have a look here at the margins, so we take that EBITDA, we divide it by the revenue, we put a percentage on that, and we actually extrapolate it all the way to 2013. We can see that the margins in 2013 were about 12%, whereas in 2022, we see an EBITDA margin of 31%, heavily increasing their profit margins here. 24% EBITDA growth for the past 10 years, starting with 90, ending with 750. Very, very impressive. Moving over at that debt level here, we can see that they basically have no debt on their balance sheet whatsoever. They had 140 billion in 2013, and they only just crossed the 1 billion mark in 2022. Given the fact that their EBITDA is around 750 million, I think this level of debt is in no way a problem for them and they can easily handle this. On top of this, they also have a lot of cash on their balance sheet as well in their war chest that they can use for any reason that they choose to, including buying back debt. If they want to, they can easily have their debt um, in any given year. Market cap, so the price on the open market itself, the amount of shares outstanding multiplied by the actual share price has been increasing by 23% annually. Absolute amazing returns for anyone who bought into ASMI in 2013. Enterprise value is the entire value of the business. So we take the market cap or the price on the open market itself to which we then add the debt and we subtract the cash, giving us the total value of the business in a way that any other company who might want to acquire ASMI would look at this company because of course they have to buy the shares from the open market, but then they also have to incur the debt that ASMI has on their balance sheet. EV EBITDA, how many years of EBITDA does it take currently for them to buy back the entirety of their enterprise value? We can see about 14 times in 2013 and around 16 times in 2022. We also see a very high number of 29 times in 2021 and only 9 times in 2018, which is arguably absolute which is arguably an absolute steal for this company. Overall though, their multiple has been around 15 times. Net debt to EBITDA overall for the past 10 years has been negative, which basically means they had more cash on their balance sheet than they had debt to compensate for that. They had a lot of cash to work with. In 2022, for the first time in forever basically, they are actually positively levered, but nowhere near the three times mark that we deem to be in the dangerous territory. They are at 0.8 times, so I think that ASMI is in no risk of bankruptcy whatsoever any time in the future. And if they want, they can easily leverage up their business to expand heavily if they wish to do so. So now let's move into their cash flow statement. So cash flow from operation has also been increasing by 24% in line with EBITDA, which is very much what we want to see. Their capital expenditure is also increasing in line with their actual cash flow increase, which makes sense because of course they have to maintain all the facilities that they do have, and that's also included in the capital expenditure cost. If we take the cash flow from operation and we subtract the capital expenditure from that, we get the free cash flow, which is basically your pro rata ownership of the company. All this money is available to you at the end of the fiscal year to reward you as a shareholder. And they can do this by either paying you a dividend buying back some shares, do some mergers and acquisitions, or just buy back the debt. Now we just noticed that they basically have no debt to speak of. Now we just noticed that they basically have no debt to speak of. So the free cash flow will probably not be going into that direction. We can see here in the next column that they have been buying back shares on occasion here during their 10 year period, reducing the overall share count by about 2% annually, which is quite nice for you as an investor because you get a larger ownership of the company, a company that's steadily increasing their revenue and earnings, and you have nothing to actually do for that. The company just does it for you. 
On top of this, ASMI is also very much increasing their operations and they're also paying a slight dividend here every single year to their shareholders. The moment that we take the free cash flow and we divide it by the amount of shares outstanding, we get the free cash flow per share, which has been increasing by 29% because of course their free cash flow is growing and the amount of shares are decreasing, which basically gives you a hockey stick return when it comes to the free cash flow per share. Price per share, this is the price as seen on the open market itself, has been increasing by 26% annually for the past 10 years. This does not include dividends either. The total return will be slightly more than this, which is an absolutely amazing return for any investment. And once again, kudos for anyone who invested into ASMI in 2013. The free cash flow yield on average has been around 4%, where we definitely see some lower numbers like in 2021, 2020, and also some higher numbers like in 2019. So let's try to project this company here into the future. So we have seen that for the past 10 years, they've been growing their EBITDA by 24% annually. I think this is quite a high number and I want to be a bit more conservative here with my estimates. So I'm going to give them 20% here for 2023 and I'm going to slowly reduce their earnings all the way down to 11% 10 years from now, which is still a double digit growth. It's still an amazing growth, but I don't expect them to quite reach this 24% annual number that they have been doing for the past 10 years. I'm also going to attach a multiple of 15 times which is around their historic multiple here and this gives me an enterprise value 10 years from now of 48 billion dollars from which we then subtract the debt we add the cash gives us a market cap of 47 billion. The Divide this by the amount of shares outstanding, and I'm assuming here that the amount of shares outstanding remained the same, giving me a stock price 10 years from now of 963 euros and 69 cents. For their free cash flow method, I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to grow it by 20% for the first year, all the way down to 11% for the last year in 2032. I'm going to attach their average yield here of 4%, giving me a stock price 10 years from now of 951 euros and 66 cents, which is quite in line with what we projected here for their enterprise value model. Looking at the stock market right now, I can buy as many shares as I want of ASMI for 435 euros and 25 cents. Giving both my projections of the enterprise value model as well as the free cash flow model gives me an overall share price 10 years from now of 957 euros and 68 cents. I do want to note here that most of the time my numbers do say dollars behind them, but actually these numbers are all in euros. I just didn't quite find the time to change this symbol in every single column. Looking at the price on the stock market itself, I expect a compounding annual growth rate in their stock price of 8.2% annually. The moment that we also include the free cash flow that we can expect them to generate here for the next 10 years. As projected in our free cash flow model, I expect an IRR, an internal rate of return of 13.2%. On average, the stock market always returns about 10%. So I think ASMI will probably return around the same level here. The moment that you actually expect them to keep on maintaining their 20% growth here for the next 10 years, we do see a very different prognosis of 18% IRR for the next 10 years but this does assume a steady 20% growth every single year, year over year, which I personally think is a little bit unreasonable. So I wanna be a bit more conservative here and I'm gonna say 13.2% IRR with the current market price. So let's see what happens if the price goes up or comes down a little bit. So the moment that the price goes down to about 313 euros, I expect an IRR of 18.2%. Now do mind you, the price in 2022 was actually quite a bit lower than this, 240 euros. The price shot up tremendously here for the past few months. And anyone who bought ASMI for 240 euros here made an absolute killing on their investment. And I expect an IRR for them probably around the 25% range here. Absolute amazing buy for anyone who did that. Nevertheless, even if the price goes up a little bit, let's say to around the 500 euros mark, I still expect an overall market returning yield here of 10% IRR, which is definitely not that great, but it's also definitely not that bad. So this was it for ASMI. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.